Hello, hello. Here is the video going over the Unit 5 Quadratics Review. Now, for this particular video, I am not going to go through every single question in the review, just because some of it gets quite repetitive. So I went through and handpicked the ones that I felt were important or the ones that um, I thought maybe one would be enough to go over. Um, so the first questions, the first five questions talk about equations of the parabolas as well as uh, differences in concavity. So it says write an equation of a parabola that opens up. Now, first and foremost, we need to understand what the equation actually should look like and what the different pieces represent. So I'm gonna go ahead and write vertex form over here. So a x minus h squared plus k. So h k represents your vertex and your a right here is what is going to determine whether or not your parabola opens up, down is gonna have a maximum or a minimum. So an equation that is going to open up needs to have a positive value for a. So I'm gonna go ahead and write any equation that has a positive a, I can pick whatever I want for my h and my k, and there is your equation of a parabola that opens up. Similarly, a parabola that opens down is going to have a negative a. So I can write whatever equation I want as long as my a is negative. Okay. Now, parabolas that have a maximum. So your maximum represents your vertex. Your maximum is going to be the highest point on your parabola. So if I have a maximum, that means my parabola is opening down. And if I have a minimum, that means my parabola is opening up. So using the same ideas as one and two, a parabola that has a maximum is going to have a negative value for a, since that parabola needs to open down. So I'm just going to pick my a, make it negative, choose whatever I want for my vertex for the rest of the equation. Since I need a minimum, my parabola needs to open up, so that is going to be a positive a. So I'm just going to pick seven, x squared minus three for my equation. Number five, what is or are the differences between a parabola that is concave up versus a parabola that is concave down? So a parabola that is concave up is going to be opening up. So your parabola is doing something like this, which means your A is going to be positive and you are going to have a minimum. A parabola that is concave down needs to open down. That means my A is going to be negative and I would have a maximum. All right, next up, I'm jumping to number seven. So using the equation, you are going to graph the parabola. So I have my equation in vertex form. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna find my vertex. My vertex I'm going to, is my h and my k. I am going to take the opposite of what's in the parentheses since it's f x minus h. So that means my h is three and my k is negative seven. That's actually what's going to go in your table right in the middle in the bolded area. So three negative seven. And since I know my vertex, I can also establish my equation for the axis of symmetry. It is your x equals and your x coordinate of your vertex, since your axis of symmetry is going to go right through the vertex. I can go ahead and plot my vertex and graph my axis of symmetry. So three negative seven is right here. I'm gonna draw a vertical dotted line through that point and that line represents my axis of symmetry. From here, I can pick my other values of x, go in numerical order, and I can take all of those and plug them in to my function to figure out my other values for y. So I can plug in one, so I have two, one minus three squared minus seven. That gives me two, one minus three is negative two, negative two squared is four. So eight minus seven is one. And I am also going to plug in two so I can get my other value. 
So I have 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1, oops, minus 7, so that's 2 minus 7, which is negative 5. Now, if I look at my table, it is a parabola, it represents a parabola, which means these points are going to be symmetrical. So these two will be the same, and those two will be the same. So I have negative 5 and 1. So I can go ahead and plot all of those points. So 1, 1, 2, negative 5, opposite side as well, since it is symmetrical. Oops. There we go. And I can see from my graph that it is opening up. And since it opens up, it is going to have a minimum. Okay, number eight. Do the following functions share the same y-intercept? State yes or no. Justify your answer algebraically. So anytime you are trying to find your y-intercept, that is when x equals zero. So for both of these expressions, I'm going to plug in zero for x to actually calculate what my y-intercept is going to be. So I have 2y equals 10, y equals 5. So my y-intercept for the linear function is the ordered pair 0, 5. I'm going to do the same thing for my quadratic. I'm going to plug in 0 for x. That gives me negative 1. Uh, 0 plus 2 is 4. No, 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. That gives me negative 4 plus 9, which is also 5. So do these have the same y-intercept? Yes, they do. And we solved it algebraically by putting in 0 for x. Okay, narrow versus wide. So once again, your vertex form, which I'm rewriting over here, your A gives us a lot of information. It tells us if it's opening up or down. It'll also tell us if it is opening or if your parabola is going to be narrow or wide. If A is bigger than 1, that is going to be more narrow. You'll have a nice skinny parabola. If A is between 0 and 1, that is going to create a parabola that is wider. Now, for the negatives, because you can have negative values for A, when I am looking at if a parabola is more wide or narrow, I kind of ignore the fact that some of them can be negative, because that negative will just tell me that my parabola opens down. So for letter B, I'm going to identify all of my A's. So my equation number one, A is two. Equation number two, A is one fourth. And equation number three, A is negative ten. But once again, I'm going to kind of ignore the fact that it's negative because that's just telling me that the parabola is opening down. So the widest parabola is going to actually have the smallest value for A, which is going to be equation number 2, followed by equation number 1, where my A was 2, and then finally my largest value for A, which is going to create the most narrow parabola, was equation number 3. Number 10, sketch a graph of a quadratic function with the given characteristics. It is concave down, has two x-intercepts, axis of symmetry at x equals 5. So I'm going to go ahead and graph my axis of symmetry first at x equals 5. I need something that is concave down, so that means it's opening down and has two x-intercepts, so it's going to cross the x-axis twice. So there is a sketch for letter A. For letter B, it has a minimum, y-intercept at 0, 1, axis of symmetry at x equals negative 2. So I'm going to go to negative 2 and graph my axis of symmetry. My y-intercept is 0, 1, and it has a minimum. So if it has a minimum, that means your parabola is opening up. I do need to go through my y-intercept. And of course, since parabolas are symmetrical, that same point is on the other side of your axis of symmetry. So that'll help me draw a parabola that's nice and symmetrical. All right, writing equations. 
So write the equation of the quadratic in vertex form, then justify your equation. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and write down my vertex form since I need it several times, and I can go ahead and start. First thing I need is my vertex. When you're looking at a table, examine your y values. And what you're looking for with your y values is you are looking for one number that is surrounded by the same numbers. So it creates a sandwich. So if I look at my y's, I have three, four, three. Ooh, I see it right away. Four is surrounded by threes, so that means my vertex is negative one, four. Now to be able to solve for a, I also need another point. So my vertex is negative one, four. I'm going to pick any other point to help me find a. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the point zero, three. I love points with zeros in them because they're easier to work with. My vertex is h and k, and my point is x and y. And I'm going to replace all four of these values into this equation right here in vertex form to be able to solve for a. So I have three equals a, which I don't know, x minus h, but I'm subtracting a negative one, so that becomes x plus one, or zero plus one squared plus k. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the four from both sides. I like to do that first just to get it out of the way. That gives me negative one equals a times zero plus one is one, one squared is one, so a times one. Oh, so a is just negative one. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and write my equation. So I'm gonna put in my a, which is negative one, with my h and my k. And I do still need to verify that this equation is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and use a different point. I'm gonna use one zero, and I'm going to plug it into my equation to make sure my equation is actually correct. So I have zero equals negative one, uh, one plus one squared plus four, four, that gives me negative one, two squared is four, which gives me negative four plus four, which most definitely equals zero. So our equation is correct. For the next one, I can see from my graph where my vertex is. This is at four, five. So my vertex is four, five. I'm going to pick another point, any point. I'm gonna go with three, two, to be able to solve for my a. So there's your h, k, x, and y. I'm going to plug it into the vertex form, which I have highlighted in yellow. So I have two equals a, x minus h squared plus k. That gives me, well, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the five to get it out of the way. That's negative three equals a times four, or three minus four is negative one, squared is positive one, so a equals three, negative three. All right, I can go ahead and set up my equation. Not 100% sure that it is correct yet because I do still need to verify, but I'm replacing my a, h, and k. I'm gonna use my other point, five, two, for x and y to see if my equation is correct. So I have two equals negative three, five minus four squared plus five. Simplifying, that's negative three times five minus four is one, one squared is one. So I have negative three plus five, which is two. So our equation is correct. All right, moving forward. Jumping to 15, given each quadratic equation, determine the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts, solve algebraically, but you can check your answers on your graphing calculator, write your answers as points, and round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Okay, so I'm gonna do my y-intercept in purple. For my y-intercept, that is when I'm going to plug in zero for x, and then simplify, so that gives me two times, what is that, negative seven squared is 49, minus eight, which is 49 times two is 98, minus eight is 90. So 
So my y-intercept as an ordered pair is 0, 90. So for my y-intercept, I'm plugging in 0 for x. For my x-intercept, I'm plugging in 0 for y. So let me go ahead and make that note. So y-intercept is when x equals 0. x-intercept is when y equals 0. So now for my x-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for y, and that's going to leave me with an equation to solve for x with. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. That gives me 8 equals 2 times x minus 7. Divide by 2, because I want to isolate um, this x minus 7 squared. That leaves me with 4 equals x minus 7 squared. From here, I need to take the square root. Now, the square root of 4 is 2. But anytime you're taking the square root and it gives you a number, whether it's a whole number or a decimal, whatever it is, um, you always need a plus or minus in the front. So I'm going to have plus or minus 2 equals x minus 7. That is going to allow us to get our two x-intercepts for the quadratic function. So I can separate this to two equations. I have positive 2 equals x minus 7, so x equals 9. I'll also set up negative 2 equals x minus 7, so x equals 5. And I can go ahead and write both of those as ordered pairs, 9, 0, and 5, 0. So just friendly reminder, anytime you're taking the square root and you get a number, you need that plus or minus in the front because that's going to help you set up your two equations to solve for your two x-intercepts if they do exist. All right, letter C, jumping to letter C. Um, my y-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for x. Well, that was a nice one. Gave me 14. So ordered pair is 0, 14. For my x-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for y. I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. That gives me negative 14 equals x squared. I can go ahead and square root. But right here, I am taking the square root of a negative, which if you put that in the calculator, is going to give you an error because the square roots of negatives are not real numbers. They're actually imaginary numbers that you will learn about in your future math classes, like Algebra 2. Anyway, since I cannot take the square root of negative 14, it gives me an error. That means I do not have any x-intercepts. So none. So that graph does not cross the x-axis at all. All right, that concludes your video going over some of the questions from your Unit 5 review. Good luck on your test.